This video is sponsored by the authentic military online game, War Thunder. Imagine this. It's a scene out of Ocean's Eleven. A group of criminals have pulled off the perfect heist. Millions are stolen from the bank, the vault is empty, and no one even got a look at the masterminds behind the robbery. Left without much more than a height and a vague description of a masked culprit, authorities are stumped. But a breakthrough is made when investigators discover a piece of DNA evidence, a definitive proof that will help police prove who was at the scene of the crime. The only problem? It matches more than one person. January 25th, 2009, the Berlin police had found themselves in a situation with high stakes. In the early hours of the morning, three masked individuals had broken into the luxury department store Kaufhaus des Westens, or KDW. And as far as store swindles go, this was definitely no run-of-the-mill convenience store heist. KDW is the second largest department store in Europe just behind the famous Harrods in London, England. Since its opening in 1907, the store, when operational, has been catering to customers seeking high-end merchandise, offering luxury goods and designer brands. As such, the store has motion detectors included in their security system to keep the store and its luxurious products safe, which the thieves completely evaded. The three culprits had climbed up to the roof, lowering themselves into the main hall by rappelling through a skylight into the shopping center's main hall into the men's department. Once there, the robbers got to business. The group managed to pry open display cases and steal roughly 6.8 million euros worth of jewelry and luxury watches before escaping out into the city, evading not just the security system again, but also the police. They hadn't tripped the alarm, which meant that the security staff didn't check the camera system until it was too late. The masks and gloves they wore meant that the CCTV footage was useless to identify any of the culprits. But as much as it sounds like the perfect crime, they had made a mistake. Police investigation turned up two pieces of evidence, the rope ladder and a rubber glove discarded next to it. Specifically, a rubber glove that yielded a drop of sweat with DNA evidence. Yet the DNA analysis only further confused things when the police processed the genetic material from the glove and found that it matched not one, but two individuals, a pair of brothers named Hassan and Abbas O. But even with the inconsistency, police moved quickly. After a couple of weeks, they arrested the two brothers and brought them in, only to be left with a conundrum. Hassan and Abbas were identical twins. Their DNA were the same. Which one had committed the crime? Was it one or both of them? And how would they be able to tell? Before we get into the perfect crime that a pair of twins committed with a warplane, have you ever imagined flying across the sky with your own military aircraft? Well, with this video's sponsor, War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle warfare game ever made, you can experience the thrill of piloting over 2,000 authentically rendered tanks, airplanes, helicopters, and ships in enormous combined arms PvP battles. The collection of vehicles in War Thunder span over 100 years of development from the 1920s to the present day, and are authentically rendered to the last detail, even down to their individual components. Combined Combined with the incredible 4K resolution graphics, authentic sound effects, and beautiful music, playing a game feels like a highly immersive combat experience. In this game, your tanks don't have measly hit points that tick down. Your vehicles suffer actual damage to their parts and crew. War Thunder even shows you a damage x-ray view so you can see exactly what happens to your vehicle when it gets hit. My favorite thing in War Thunder is the amount of options you can have and how you can customize every single detail, like different camouflages and markings based on the historical period. So you can either mimic a specific historical vehicle during combat, or create your own unique design. Best of all, it's free. Play now on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and even previous console generations. War Thunder is now gifting a massive free bonus pack for new players across all platforms, and users that haven't played within the last six months can benefit too if you click to play through our link. The pack includes multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, an exclusive 3D decorator for your vehicles, and much more, but only for a limited time. Click our link in the description box to play War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox today. Identical twins carrying out the perfect crime. Sounds like something straight out of a movie. And while some may imagine an episode of CSI with a pair of twins conspiring to carry out the perfect crime, it dates back earlier than you might expect. 
1952, American brothers Charles and George Finn purchased a C-46 aircraft from the Bakersfield School District, which just happened to have decommissioned airplanes lying around, I guess, intending to use it as a cargo plane and start their own airline. But they ran into more than a few problems. First, in order to get the plane registered in their name, they were bounced back and forth between the Civil Aeronautics Authority and the Federal Security Agency. After they finally got the license, they were faced with expensive repairs to the aircraft, which had been sitting in the schoolyard unused for six years. Next, during those years, the runway where it was stored had been shortened, and they almost didn't have space for takeoff. The twins took a gamble and were able to fly the plane out, parking it with International Airports Incorporated, a company who had agreed to lease the plane. But then, the brothers ran into trouble again. The FBI started asking questions, following the twins around for eight months. Where did you buy that plane? How did you fly it away? How did you find out about it? What's your purpose? According to a lawsuit filed by the federal government, the school district didn't actually have the authority to sell the plane, as it was to be used for educational use only, and could not be sold for commercial uses. And now the Finns found themselves with the government breathing down their necks, saying the sale was void, demanding the airplane back, along with an additional $198,000. But see, the Finn twins just really didn't want to give it back. You know, not after having bought the plane with all the red tape, nor pay the fines for doing so. So, they did the only thing that seemed reasonable at the time. Namely, they stole it back from the company leasing the plane, flying it back to the school district. The plane was then seized by a marshal sent by the U.S. Attorney's Office without a warrant. In defiance, the twins stole their plane again and flew it out to Nevada to hide it in an abandoned airport in the middle of the desert. Fired up by their brilliant plan, George appeared in court asking the federal government to drop the case. When the judge asked him which Finn he was, he didn't answer. So he was arrested for contempt, but let go soon after. Then, the twins played a little game with the FBI. Charles had stayed with the plane in Nevada, and when FBI agents showed up, they didn't have an arrest warrant with them and had to go back to Los Angeles. When they came back with an arrest warrant for Charles, George, who had swapped clothes with his twin, went with the agents, only to reveal they had the wrong guy. This plan ended up with the FBI holding George in jail illegally, though. Once the federal government finally had the twins in court, they encountered an issue. Witnesses couldn't tell the two apart. So despite having the culprits in custody, a grand jury decided against prosecution because they couldn't prove who had actually committed the crime. The twins then proceeded to immediately blow their new lease on life by getting themselves arrested once more. This time, the two tried to enact a citizen's arrest on U.S. Attorney Laughlin Waters for illegally keeping their plane from them. The Finn twins slapped a pair of handcuffs on the attorney, claiming he had violated their civil rights by withholding their property. Now with plenty of proof, the duo were charged with assaulting and impeding a federal officer, a crime that they wound up serving 115 days in prison for, presumably because this time, no one had to tell the two apart. In the Berlin case, even with the CCTV footage showing the three robbers getting out of a van at a nearby street showed they had a folding ladder, a rope ladder, some extra rope, a screwdriver, crowbar, and several backpacks to carry their haul away, the footage was deemed useless to identify any of the suspects. But the police had DNA evidence, which means they had an airtight case, right? Well, no. DNA evidence can provide good circumstantial evidence by connecting biological material found at the scene of a crime, like hair, blood, or other bodily fluids, to the DNA of a suspect, assuming that the police actually have it on file for comparison, that is. But while undoubtedly a game changer for criminal investigations, genetic material can be damaged through heat and humidity. DNA found on the scene can also be incomplete, or sometimes a mixture of multiple people's DNA, all of which can lead to false or partial matches, meaning that it should probably be better used to establish someone that is likely to have been involved. Which means that DNA evidence isn't enough to prove guilt. Guilt has to be established through other means. So while finding the glove with DNA evidence might have been a short-lived triumph for the police, the suspects wearing the gloves was the downfall of the investigation, as an expert explained to Berlin's daily newspaper Der Tagesspiegel. Monozygotic twins can only be identified by their fingerprints. That's why this case is unprecedented in Berlin's criminal history. While both Hassan and Abbas O oh had criminal records for theft and fraud, which put them in the criminal database system where the police had matched their DNA to the glove found at the crime scene, that was all the evidence authorities had. 
It wasn't like police had found the loot in the brothers' home. In fact, they hadn't found any sign of the stolen goods at all. And much like the Finn brothers, there was nothing else to actually link one or both of the twins to the crime. Sure, police suspected that one of them had taken part in the heist, but that was all they had. As a result, the police couldn't charge either of the brothers, and certainly couldn't just detain anyone on a suspicion, let alone hold two suspects without proof that one of them had stolen millions of euros worth of luxury goods. So, in the end, they had to let the two go. As criminal law expert Hans Ulrich Pafgen of Bonn University put it, the law doesn't allow us to detain someone indefinitely just because he is suspected of a crime. I'd rather live in a country where someone guilty is not convicted for lack of conclusive evidence than in a place where innocent people are locked up. And as Hassan's lawyer Axel Weiman stated, a glove with DNA evidence is just evidence that someone wore a glove, not that they were actually at the scene of a crime. Weiman argued in court that the glove may have been left there by someone else, possibly to frame his client. And whether or not you believe it, well, it's not like the police had any evidence to the contrary. Even though the evidence may seem too good to be true, it's probably wise to double check with more than just DNA evidence all the same when twins are the suspects. Remember, click our link in the description box to play War Thunder for free and get a massive bonus pack with multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, an exclusive 3D decorator for your vehicles, and much more today.